Do you need to blur out or pixelate a logo or maybe a license plate or something else that you need to censor? Well, then the Obscure Shape filter is probably just right for what you're trying to do. The Obscure Shape filter is part of the Editor Essentials collection from Dashwood. And uh, I have some footage here. I'm just going to apply the filter. And right away, we see that there's some pixelization happening here. And uh, the first option up here is Show Source Only. So I'm just going to turn that on. And uh, it darkens everything that we're not pixelating. So we, we turn this option on just to set up uh, what we need to set up. Um, I'm going to select the uh, Obscure Shape effect. We see in Premiere Pro, we get a bunch of different uh, control points. These control points are active when you select custom eight point. So we can create a custom shape. So we can make it any shape we want. Let's say there was a, a logo with a strange shape, then we can do that. Um, the softness control uh, controls how much edge softness our shape has. So let's turn that down to zero for now. Uh, the pixelization size, we are on pixelate mode. Let's just leave it there for now. I'll turn the pixelization size down a bit. And you can see how this eight point shape maker works. So if we had a really strange shape, that's what we would use. What I want to use right now is actually rectangle. And uh, just take the center point and put it right over the license plate. And then I'm going to change its uh, scale and aspect ratio. So of course, scale just changes how big it is. Um, we can do some fine tuning here. And uh, aspect ratio just literally changes uh, the shape of the rectangle. At the moment, it's set to one, so it's a perfect square. And I'm just gonna you know, stretch it out to the shape of the license plate and scale it down even more. Okay, so uh, there we go. We've now made the basic shape of the license plate. Of course, we can also change the angle if we needed to do that, but I don't need that for this shot. And uh, I'm going to change the mode from pixelate to blur. So we'll just use a Gaussian blur. We also have some other modes here that, uh, you know, they all basically do the same thing. You're just trying to obscure whatever uh, we don't want the audience to see. So we'll pick the uh, Gaussian Blur, and it defaults to a value of 10, but you can adjust that and make it really blurry if you want. So that looks pretty good. Let's uh, turn off the Show Source Only. And now, as you see, uh, we can make the scale a little bit larger and increase uh, the softness on the soft edge. Another option is that we can actually invert this selection and make everything except the license plate very blurry. So that works just fine for uh, shots that aren't really moving around very much. But let's say we want to obscure a license plate on an object that's moving quite a bit. So what I've done, let's just look at the first frame here of uh, this shot. And I've made a small rectangle pixelated uh, shape here. Uh, I'm just going to make that like a different... Let's, yeah, let's make it a Toro blur. That looks kind of cool. And I'm just going to move the position to be immediately over the license plate numbers on the side of the C do. And we'll bring the scale down even a little bit more. Just make it a really subtle effect. So, um, well, how do we track this shot? Because as the shot moves, our... Um, our point stays exactly where it was. So what do we do to fix this? Well, um, the great thing about the way Premiere Pro works with After Effects is you can just move media back and forth with Dynamic Link. And um, so we can just use the tracker in After Effects to track this point. So I'm just going to select the clip, and then I'm going to go up to the File menu, select Adobe Dynamic Link, and select Replace with After Effects Composition. After Effects now launches, and it asks us what we want to name this, this project for this clip. So uh, I'm just going to call this uh, License Plate Obscure. 
there we go. Now we have our composition, and uh, we see that the effect is already applied, which is great. This is our clip. Uh, if we go into effects for the clip, we see obscure shape already applied. Uh, the position, everything that we had already set is already there. Now all I want to do is track the position. So I'm going to select the uh, position parameter here. Now we go up to the animation menu and select track effect point control. And that automatically creates a tracker. So um, that's, that's it. Now we just have to actually um, get the tracker to track. And that's really easy. You just go over here to the uh, Tracker Effects palette and hit the Analyze Forward button. And now it starts tracking forward and starts tracking the whole shot. Okay, so the tracker is almost done here. There we go. And uh, so now we see all of our tracking points in here but we're actually looking at the layer at the moment, so we have to switch back to the composition view. And we see all the tracking points here. Uh, now we're still not linked here, and this is kind of something a little weird with After Effects, not completely intuitive, but uh, if we click on the tracker, uh, the motion source will set it to the layer itself, and then what happens is we end up, uh, we can see that the motion target is on the obscure shape and the position parameter. And uh, one last thing that we have to do, we'll click on position and we have to click apply. We want the X and Y dimension. And now it's linked to the tracker. So it's a little, little tricky, but uh, you get the idea. Now if I hit play here, we can see that our effect, our blurring effect is tracked. Now let's say I don't like the, the twirl effect well, I can change it. It's not a problem. So I'll just switch it to, let's say, pixelate. There we go. And uh, maybe I'll put a little bit of a soft edge on it. There we go. And now that license plate is blocked all the way through the shot. Now, how do we take this back to Premiere Pro? Well, that's very easy. We can actually just quit After Effects and save the project. And now when we go back to Premiere Pro, it will automatically update, and we see that it's uh, pink, indicating that it's an After Effects Dynamic Link project. As soon as it's updated from the saved file, we see that uh, the change that we made in After Effects is here. We now have a pixelization. And uh, we're now just looking at this project. And if I hit play, it will try to render in real time, and you'll see that the obscure effect parameter, position parameter, is tracking along just as we had done in After Effects. Now the concept works exactly the same way in Apple Motion. You can uh, track individual parameters, and it's actually much easier than in After Effects. Uh, it's not as tricky, and it makes a lot more sense.